Today, I'm Cass Kim, and I'm here to talk to you about metadata. Metadata matters for people who are querying just as much as it matters for people who are self-publishing. So I'm gonna break it into two parts today. First, we're gonna talk about the metadata you need for self-publishing. Then we're gonna talk about the metadata that you're gonna need if you're querying an agent with your manuscript. Metadata is very important because it's the information that people use when they're deciding to buy your book. You're going to need it for interviews. You're going to need it for setting up your book for publishing. So first we'll talk about what made it metadata you need for each area and we'll talk about why it's important to keep it all in one place. So self-publishing metadata. First of all, you need a title. I know some of this is a little bit of a given, but still, this is stuff that you need to know and it's stuff you should keep all in one place to make your publishing journey a little bit easier. So you need your title. If your book has a subtitle, you're gonna need the subtitle as well. You need to know the price that you're going to be offering it at. You need to know the publication date. So if you're self-publishing and your publication date is whenever it goes live on Amazon, that's fine. Just make sure that you write it down so that when you're doing sell sheets later on, you have that information. Um, if you're setting up your ISBN, such as like Embockers, um, hello. Um, if you're setting up your ISBN, such as Embockers or wherever you do it in the UK or other countries, um, you need to know your publication date for that as well. Um, you need to know two broad categories that your book is going to fit in. So that could be fiction, uh, fantasy, coming of age. Fiction, fantasy, dragons, something like that. Um, so two broad categories. And then you need to know your subcategories. I believe on Amazon you can put up to 15 if you email KDP help. But most places you only need to know two to three subcategories. Um, Additionally, you can do keywords. You're going to need a good solid six to eight keywords, pretty much no matter where you're publishing. Keywords are also gonna be helpful when you're doing advertising later on. You need to know your page count. So if you're publishing in Kindle Direct Publishing, when you upload your manuscript, they figure out the page count for you. However, when you're publishing other places such as Ingram Spark, you actually have to put the page count in as part of your metadata input before they even review your book manuscript. So you do need to know your overall page count. Uh, it's also gonna be useful for other marketing aspects. Uh, you need to know your cover type. So if you're publishing um, through Ingram Spark, they have a couple different types of bindings, whether it's case, laminate, um, perfect bound. I think they used to do saddle stitch, but they are grandfathering that out right now. You usually want to know your trim size as well. Trim size is important because if you're publishing multiple places, your interior files and your cover are going to have to match your trim size. And so if it's a different trim size, different places, that's important to know. Typically, you want to keep your trim size about the same place to place um, just because you want uniformity in your book, right? So you need to know your trim size, which would be how tall, how wide is the book. Um, and then you need to know your author bio. So most people don't necessarily think of the author bio as the metadata that you need for your book, but it is going to be put in. It's put in both when you register your ISBN and it's put in when you either set up an author central account or when you're inputting your information into Ingram. So you do need to have an author bio prepped and ready before you begin publishing. And then your blurb, everybody's least favorite thing to write, I swear. I We, we can write 70,000 word, 80,000 word, 120,000 word novels, but then ask us to write a synopsis or a blurb that's gonna catch interest of the audience without giving too much information away. Ugh, the worst part, am I right? But get your blurb ready early, have people read it, get some feedback on it, make sure it's the best blurb that you could possibly have. Um, okay. Just want to make sure I thought we had a comment. I want to make sure I don't miss any comments um, or questions. Uh, so that's what you need if you're going to self-publish. So title, subtitle, price, publication date, ISBN, two broad categories, multiple subcategories, keywords, page count, cover type and size, author bio, and blurb. Those are all things that you need to have ready before you begin self-publishing. 
Um, so now let's talk a little bit about querying. So if you're going to be querying your book to an agent, you want to go the traditional publishing route. There's some things that you need to include in your query letter long before they ask for the full manuscript, long before you're looking at contracts. You need to know for your query, you need to know your word count. So if you're publishing, self-publishing, really the more important thing is your page count. If you're querying an agent for traditional publishing, the more important thing to know is your word count because formatting will change your page count no matter which way you do your trim size, how you do your font size, what type of font you use. All of that is going to impact your page count. Agents care about your word count. Um, you need to know your, your hook and your synopsis. So your hook is like that you know, one to two couple sentences that's really going to get the interest of the person reading it. So how you're going to open your query letter, it's how you're going to get them to read more of your query letter. Your synopsis is going to be kind of a lot like a blurb. You want the information that's going to make them interested in getting more information. Just like your blurb is going to be the thing that you want um, your readers to be interested in to want to know more information, right? So synopsis and blurb are kind of similar. Um, you need to know your genre and your category. So if you're querying an agent, you want to query an agent that has the that works in the genre and the category that you're querying for with your manuscript. If your manuscript is a nonfiction book about nature, you probably don't want to query somebody who represents strictly young adult fiction or adult fiction, right? So you want to make sure that your genre and your category fit the agent that you're querying and you want to make sure you state them in your query letter. Um, you also typically want to have one to two comps, which would be books or authors that you feel your writing style and your book type are similar to. You don't necessarily want to grab a New York Times bestseller that just came out two years ago or last year and is having a movie made. You know, that might be a little bit too grand. What you want to do is you want to try to find a comp that is going to be nuanced enough to be very similar to what you're selling that agent, right? Because if you're trying to get an agent interested, you tell them, that your book is a lot like this book, but then when they request the full manuscript, it's not like that book, you know, there's a good chance that you've lost that agent. So make sure that your comps are appropriate. And then you also need to have a title and a subtitle idea for your book as well when you're querying. Uh, but you have to be aware that that may or may not change depending on, you know, agent and future publishing opportunities. And you need to have your biography. So you need your author bio for traditional publishing and you need your author bio for querying for or for self-publishing and you need your author bio, author bio for querying for traditional publishing. Um, I would say that there's a little bit more leeway if you're self-publishing to put a little bit more quirk in your bio when you're querying for traditional publishing. You want your bio to be what's important, what makes you an author that has a uh, I don't know, like, have you won awards? Have you been published already? Um, you know, you want to really tell them, like, who you are in a professional way. Um, so that is the information that you need. So self-publishing, we already covered. Querying, you need word count, hook, synopsis, genre slash category, one to two really good comps of other books or authors, you need your title and subtitle, and you need a professional author bio. Doesn't have to be long, just has to be well written um, and pertinent. So those are the, the metadata pieces that you need when you're looking into beginning publishing. Um, and why do you need this and why should you keep it all in one place? That's a great question. So you need this for one reason specifically is when you're publishing for like self-publishing, this metadata is what gets pushed to the websites that are going to be carrying your book, which means all of that information, ISBN, categories, author bio, title of the book, all of that information is going to that website. So if you look up, you know, Wendy's Winter Walk, it's got my bio, it's got Kavena's bio, it's got our ISBN numbers, it has our page count, it has our price, it has all that information so people know what they're getting when they buy the book. That data goes straight from like Ingram Spark or wherever you're inputting your metadata, wherever you're publishing through. Um, it gets pushed right into the website so that you're not having to go through 10, 15, 20 different websites and inputting this information. Um, it goes to bookstores if you're emailing or cold calling bookstores asking them to, you know, consider having your book on their shelf. You're going to want all of this information right at your fingertips in case they have questions about it. Um, 
for interviews. If you're doing a podcast interview, if you're doing an online interview, if you're doing a video interview, this information at your fingertips is going to prepare you to talk about your book better. It's going to prepare you to answer any questions about your book better. Um, and then also it's going to allow you to have uniformity across platforms. So, you know, you don't want people looking up your book and in one platform it says it's 29 pages, on another platform it says it's 32 pages, or here it says it's a eight by eight sized book and over here it's a nine by 12 size book. People are gonna wonder which copy is the real copy. Um, you know, it just, it, it doesn't look professional if it doesn't have the information that it needs. Uh, so those are the reasons that you need the metadata. It's also really beneficial if you're creating something called a sell sheet, which is something that you might use if you're wanting to talk at conferences, if you're wanting to get your book in bookstores, if you're wanting to um, talk to different avenues of getting your book out there, a sell sheet is a really good thing to have. Um, so this is my little secret notebook that Kavena gave me. It's got cats and birds on it, um, so that's like perfect. And this is what I'm gonna keep all my notes in for YouTube videos. So if you guys have questions um, for upcoming videos, please make sure you let me know what your questions are so that I can make videos that are tailored to them. I am going to be doing one video a week, typically taped live on Instagram on Mondays and then put up on YouTube either Monday afternoons or Tuesday mornings with the written kind of key information for people who are maybe hearing impaired or take a little bit longer to process because I know I speak really quickly I'm trying to get better about that um, with the videos but I'm still a little bit nervous um, so the goal is one video a week on Mondays on YouTube by Tuesdays and I'm no longer after today I'm no longer going to be putting the videos on the IG TV. I'm only going to be doing the live on IG and then you can come find me on YouTube, Cass Kim's YouTube channel, um, if you want to watch the video at a later time. Okay, uh, I'm going to assume nobody has any questions. I haven't seen any put up. So um, metadata is pretty straightforward. It's kind of tedious, almost like proofreading, um, but it's really important because the more correct your categories are, the more accurate your information is, the better you're going to be able to reach the correct audience for your book. All right, thanks for tuning in and we will see you next week. Bye.